Welcome back. It's still TV3 New Day and still in the era of COVID-19. The biggest problem may be the issue of social distancing. Now, as you'd realize, Ghana, of course, has lifted its lockdown. And a lot of other countries as, as well are gradually easing the restrictions in their country. But one thing that remains is the adherence to social distancing. Here in the country, that's been a big major challenge because, especially for the markets and for crowded places, this seems almost impossible. And so we'll be speaking to doctors today, first of all, to tell us what they have noticed, what they think may be the challenges with um, social distancing and what they think we can do about it. And so I've been joined by Dr. Irajwa Kankam Yeboa from the Nyaho Medical Center. Good morning, Doc. How are you doing? Good morning. Doing well. How are you doing? Too? I'm fine, thank you. And also we have Dr. Kwame Akrasi, and he's speaking to us from Kumasi, from the First Care Hospital. And I hope you're also doing well. I'm very well. Thank you very much. Good morning to you and your viewers. Oh, well, yeah, I'm sure that they have responded. So first of all, I want to start off with Kumasi. I'll come to you, Dr. Rajwa. But Dr. Krasi, tell me, I mean, since the president, um, you know, put in place the restrictions preventing people from gathering um, at places and all that, what, what have you noticed? Okay, so um, it's been a challenge, especially with, um, I prefer to call it physical distance, distancing rather than social distancing. Um, mm. As you notice, um, most of our marketplaces, most of the um, places that we gather, they are cr quite crowded with the numbers that we have and the limited space that we have. Mm. Um, it's quite difficult to maintain the, the um, guideline, the guideline um, prescribed six feet distancing so it's been quite a, a challenge here um yeah. but what's encouraging is the the use of the masks mm -hmm. i've noticed that a lot of people are using face masks um especially the homemade ones and um i personally think that's quite encouraging um okay. although there's still room for improvement and um a little bit more education would go a long way to help with that Okay, what about you, Dr. Raju? I mean, you have been here in Accra, and so, of course, we've recorded the highest numbers. And so, we're expecting that people would realize this and want to stay away from each other. But I don't think we're seeing that happening here in Accra, are we? Um, we so, we are not. And it really depends on the socioeconomic bracket you are looking at. So, mm -hmm. when you have those who are a bit more uh, financially, should I say, well healed. Mm. You know, most of them have relatives and friends who are outside the country. They know the realities of this pandemic when it gets serious. So a lot of them are taking it very seriously. Mm -hmm. A lot of them are not allowing people to, let, to visit them and whatnot. They are very rigorous about their mask wearing. They don't go out. So you have, you know, that strata of people. And then you have those who are trying, you know, to meet the new requirements, use of mask, and such. Yeah. Um, the only thing is, I, I have to say, though, that most businesses are doing extremely well, you know, providing the Veronica buckets, checking temperatures, providing hand sanitizers. Mm -hmm. I think now a lot of establishments who don't let you enter if you don't have the face mask. My only comment about that is, a lot of people are wearing it, but they are not wearing it properly. You know, <laughs> they have it on their face and it's slung around. It's just under their nose. Yeah. It's under their chest. So, yes, but that's another, you know, topic for discussion. And then we have those who seem to have absolutely no idea what is going on. Mm -hmm. I try to engage them every now and then. And, you know, you'd be surprised. Like, we are all in the same country, but some of them actually don't know what's going on. They think it's uh almost say you know you should do x and we should do y i have no idea why so obviously somebody like that is not going to buy into uh, the physical distancing like my colleague mentioned yeah so in a car, yeah. it's really interesting to see because you see these three groups of people and we are all interacting doing their own thing but if we really want this to succeed we need everybody on board with the new direction that we decided to go I'm glad that you talked about it succeeding because the conversation has been about our cultural setting. So it's easier for the Western countries and for the European countries to practice social distancing because they have a system that enables it. So they have their homes where they live in and, you know, there's you can order online and it will be delivered at your doorstep. 
Here in Ghana, we have people who live in compound houses. We have 10 people probably sleeping in one room as well. And I'm sure that you've come across such people as well. So are we ever going to be successful at ensuring that people socially distance themselves from others if we take into consideration the setting that we have here? Um, I don't know who take it first. Dr. Dr. Akrasi, maybe? Yeah, sure. I mean, it's, it's a tough situation and it will be difficult to... Um say confidently that it would be successful for us to see this through. Um, but there is hope, you know. People, people can change. It, it always depends on the kind of education you give them, you know. Sort of um, putting it in a cultural context. Um, the, the problem we have, the, the, the disconnect we always have is that we take the information and the data mostly provided from um, an outside country. Yeah. Country, you know, from a developed country. And we try to superimpose this information on our country and on, in our cultural settings without providing it context uh -huh. like you said there are compound houses where there are 10 people sharing one room you know and five families sharing one bathroom somebody has to walk a distance you know mm -hmm. your whole, whole community using one bathroom very i like that um the government has decided to create a, a, a national CDC again, because this is very integral in taking all this scientific data and information that has been developed in um, other countries and then putting it into cultural context and using that to educate people. So there are ways that we can modify these guidelines for it to be more applicable and more pragmatic in our setting. But the, the, the work has to be done. You mm. know, the work has to be done by the intellectuals, by the elites, like um, Iradra said, there the are different strata here. And we sort of have to um, sort of let the information funnel down and then put it into cultural context. And that will allow it to be more um, pragmatic in our, in our setting. Okay, in that case, since both of you are intellectuals, I'm sure that people have heard this <laughs> over and over again, but I'll ask again. What really could be the worst thing that, that could happen if we do not adhere to the restrictions? And in this case, social distancing. Dr. Rajwa. Um, the worst thing that could happen, I mean, obviously, we are talking about massive casualties and not just of, you know, people who are going to come into contact with the disease. But what you have to realize is because we have very limited medical resources, and right now, the attention is just focused on our COVID efforts because we are trying to contain this pandemic. What is going to happen most likely is if this is not well contained, it's not well controlled, and then we have people pouring in with severe manifestations of the condition, what everybody seems to forget is that we also have people who are hypertensive. We have people who are diabetic. We have people who have other conditions that they are living with. And this same resources, which is already not enough for these chronic conditions, are now going to be channeled towards COVID treatment. And so you would have a lot more people, not just dying from large numbers of, the con of COVID, but you'd also realize that people will be dying from other things. Because definitely, if we have ambulances carrying people left, right, center, there's a severe case here, somebody is breathless there. When somebody has a stroke, it's going to take a bit more time for us to assess that person. When this person comes to hospital, they are not going to be enough beds. We've been in this country where we've talked about how there's no bed syndrome. I think the private sector is really doing well to try and absorb some of these um, excesses, you know, mm -hmm. trying to make some provision. But it's only to a point. And how many people really can access private facility? So the reason why they are making so much noise about physical distancing, social distancing, wash your hands, sanitize, it's because we are trying to control the numbers. Mm. Um, I just have to chip in that. We keep talking about flatten the curve, flatten the curve. And a lot of people don't really know what we are saying, but yeah. it seems like a fashionable catchphrase. We have to flatten the curve. Now, when we say we are flattening the curve, what we are just trying to do is we are trying to limit the number that we have at any point in time. Mm. Because you and I will bear witness that if we are to get, let's say, Ghana's allotted portion of COVID patients is going to be 50,000. And we get that 50,000 all at once. It's going to be chaos. Mm -hmm. But if we have 50,000, but that 50,000 comes 50 a day, that would be very easy to manage. That would be very easy to deal with. So, in as much as we are trying to prevent the spread, yeah. we are pragmatic. We know that definitely there would be some transmission, community transmission. Like Dr. Akresi mentioned, 
people are sleeping 10 in a room people are sleeping 20 in a room mm -hmm. some don't even sleep oh. in a room they are just sleeping by the roadside in fact there was a study that was done in new york where they swabbed about 429 homeless people and as much as 43 percent of them tested positive for covid mm -hmm. okay and these are people you can easily come into contact with so what we are really trying to do because nobody really wants to see that worst case scenario what we are really trying to do is we are trying to contain the spread and we are trying to limit the numbers that we have at any given time so that it's easier for us to manage but if that's the case then wearing your mask should be enough why should we still socially distance if the mask is protecting us dr Krasi? Okay, so the problem with the mask is that um, the coronavirus is a very, very, very tiny virus, right? And so the, the most of the masks available on the market right now cannot filter it out. Yes, it does play a role in reducing the transmission. However, it is not 100% effective, right? The studies show that the, the homemade masks with the, with the um, fabric and the print yeah. uh, um, filter only up to... 50% of bacteria and virus. Mm. Right? So, everybody is wearing it. Yes. There is some limitation. The contact is one of the main ways that it spreads. Right? So, we are, in as much as a certain degree, it is not enough for us to say, oh, we are wearing the masks, so therefore we are safe. There mm. is still some um, level of transmission. And unless every single individual in the country can be provided, with an FFP2 or anything, we have to add the social distance, the physical distance thing. The, the mass mm. alone, I'll add a little bit to the impact of it, the worst case scenario, apart from the, the effect on the, on the health sector, yeah. we have to think about it like health is the bed drop of, right? So if our morbidity and our mortality is increasing, so morbidity being the number of people that are too ill to work and mortality yeah. being those who are dead and therefore not available, to work and contribute to the economy, then we are, we are, we are looking to um, an economy and a nation that's going to crash. We're not going to have um, people that can work, people that can put in the, the effort to help build the nation. No matter what direction we are headed, if we don't have the human resources, we can't do anything. So that's another aspect of it that uh, oh. um, is what we need to adhere to these guidelines. And then if that's the case, then our markets should not be operating because we've seen what's happening in the markets. They've tried so hard <laughs> to ensure that the market women adhere to the social distancing guidelines. But it's not working. And we've seen a number of markets shut down. So at this point, should we consider closing the markets and think of another way? Because then again, all the pressure falls back on the health professionals as well. Right? Um, I do understand where you're coming from. But in a country like Ghana, it's not very pragmatic to say that you are going to shut down the market if they don't adhere to it. You may do it for a time, but invariably what happens is, you know, water will always find its level. These market women will just get another place to just congregate. I think what probably should have been done is that before the, you know, lockdown was lifted and before they took the go ahead, I think there should have been some, I, some, um, attempt to try and identify all the people there. I mean, we've all been to the market before. It's mm -hmm. packed, back, back to back. But the good thing is that a lot of these places, a lot of people don't know it, but these sellers are actually renting out their pots, okay? Mm -hmm. So they pay small amounts to people just to be able to put their plantains at one point, just to be able to put their tomatoes at one point. And all of this is kept by bookkeepers of the market. Yes, they may not be as formally educated as we are, but they have a system. And the only way you're going to be able to do the best that you can is to make use of that system. What I think we could have done would have been to collate the names of all the people that we had and then offer them alternate days so that it doesn't look like anybody's losing out. Yeah, which so is what they're doing in some of the markets, by the way. Yeah. yeah. Additionally, you realize that in some markets, they've actually marked out the spots where you can be so you just try to rotate it so that everybody gets a day or two to actually come and sell their wares mm. and the truth is that if you are really going to get people to cooperate they have to know that 
you have their interest at heart. These people are not coming to the market because uh, they want to be defiant. They have hungry children at home. Some of them are looking after old parents. They themselves need to eat. So when you ask them that you are too crowded, only Auntie Ama is going to sell her plantains, everybody else go home. It's very unfair because even as she's going home, she's thinking, what is she going to do? Her landlord is still going, going to collect his or her rent. You know, he's, he or she still has other necessities that they have to take care of beyond water and electricity. So we need to develop a system. And that's really what we need to focus on. Because for the spacing, I mean, how much property do we have even as a country? Ghana is not even one of the largest countries yeah. in Africa. So we can't in say West we Africa is <laughs> we can't say we are going to share the plot for everyone to get their own. But when you realize that you have crowded situations, Veronica Bucket should be made freely available to every single house so that everybody who is there, yes, you are crowded, 10 in a room, but everybody mm -hmm. is washing their hands. Everybody is sanitizing, you know. Okay. We make some of these things readily available because you can't treat the people in Nima and Mamobi the same way you're going to treat people in airport residential and Trasaco. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> true, true. Yeah. Anyway, so so uh, my time is up, but quickly, Dr. Krasi, I'll let you just drop a few nuggets of wisdom. Educate us a little on what we need to do in terms of social distancing, but please make it brief so we can wrap up. Sure. So, yeah, once again... Um, the, the success of this depends on us being able to marry the scientific data and the cultural context. This is very important. This is the most important. So for the thought leaders out there, the people that are making the decisions and the policies, please, please, please make sure you combine both the scientific data and the cultural context. Mm. Then for the public, just do what you can, right? Wash your hands regularly as much as you can. Go, always go out with a face mask, no matter the quality of the face mask. If we are wearing it, there's that some degree of protection. And so it's better than nothing at all. Wash your hands regularly. Sanitize using alcohol more than 60 to 70 percent. For those with public transportation, which is another um, key thing, the, the, the public transportation, make sure that you're taking fewer passengers. Make sure there's space between them. Limit conversation in the taxi, in the trotro, in this period. You don't mm. need to do the concern today. <laughs> don't worry. In a, few, in, 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 a, in, a, in a few months, this will all pass, and you can get back to gossiping about Kweku Menu and what you did last week. And, um, yeah, let's adhere to that. But most importantly, make sure you are checking in with your family. Stay connected. As much as we are physically distancing, make sure you stay connected to your friends and loved ones because that is absolutely important. Thank you so, so yeah, much. I'll leave and it at that. And, and thank you for speaking to us on air. And I hope that people have listened to your no advice. Problem. It's been a pleasure. That's Dr. Kwame Akrasi. He works at the First Care Hospital in Kumasi in the Shanti region. And Dr. Irajwa Kankam Yeboah works at the Nyaho Medical Center.